Good evening and welcome to Talk Back, the show where we ask tough, compelling questions from tough, compelling people. Our guest tonight served in the Pakistan Army for 37 years. He fought in the 1965 and 71 wars. He culminated his military career as the Corps Commander of Lahore. Four days out of uniform, he had a new job as the Governor of Sindh in a very trying time for that province. After that stint, he had another one as the Interior Minister of Pakistan during 9-11. These days, he's into philanthropy. Some call him the armored infantry man. We call him the point man. Lieutenant General Muinuddin Haider, welcome to Talk Back. Thank you. Sir, September 19th, 2002, in an interview to PBS Frontline, you were asked the question, do you believe the tribal areas, especially North and South Waziristan, are still havens for Al-Qaeda terrorists? You said, I don't think so. I don't think so. Considering your remarks and considering what's going on in North and South Waziristan these days, what do you think, General? Well, when the Americans started bombing Afghanistan, some people who were there, who were called fugitives at one time, and then now they're called Al-Qaeda, the Arab fighters, uh, they went wherever they could, and some of them may have come into this area, but they were lying dormant in those days, and there was no activity by them to, to, to create any type of alarm. But General, this statement from you is highly inaccurate considering what's, what's going on today. Was it an intelligence failure on the end of the Pakistan army and Pakistan security apparatus for you, the interior minister, to come out and make such a statement five years later? It's mayhem? No, no. But I mean, in those days, in those days, did you hear of any trouble in the northern areas? You didn't. You didn't, you didn't hear in the tribal areas. So what I'm saying is these people were, you know, found from Faisalabad. What happened? They were caught from Karachi. They were caught from Rawalpindi, from Peshawar. What happened between then and now that the situation has changed so drastically? I mean, at that time, they had, uh, you know, these people had hidden themselves in Afghanistan, in Tora Bora and many other places. But due to extreme oppression by native forces, subsequently, they escaped to Pakistan. And interestingly, as I said, they were found in Karachi. They were found in Faisalabad. They were found in Peshawar, they were found in Pindi. So you could see that tribal area was not so dangerous in 2002 as it is today. But General, you had a working understanding with them. Let's talk about that. We have a good working agreement. This is a quote from you from the same interview. With the tribal elders and with the tribal people that they will not provide sanctuary or they will not assist anybody trying to escape out of Afghanistan yes. because that's what brings troubles on, trouble on them. Yes. This regimen has been working quite smoothly so far. Yes. Not working quite smoothly these days, General. Yeah, I mean, in those days, what we tried to, try to explain to the tribal elders was that if you allow these people uh, amidst you and you give them, you know, sanctuaries, then I said uh, the, the NATO planes don't know the Jordan line. So are you, they calling, them. are you calling your time the good old days of the war on terror? Yeah, there was, by and large, I think. There was peace uh, in Fatah in those days. All right, let's switch gears. Business line, 2nd of March, 2004. You were asked the question, Kashmiris want Azadi. How feasible is that? You responded, sir. I don't think it would work. It is a landlocked place. Do you have no respect for self, the self-determination of the Kashmiri people, sir? No. You said Azadi. Azadi means being a totally independent country. But the unfinished agenda of 1947, the partition says that either Kashmiris will join India or Pakistan. And for that, there will be a plebiscite. So this is my point of view. But, but Pakistan's stance has changed. What about General Musharraf's four points? Yeah, it is his four points now. But nowhere it is being said that there will be an independent country or independent nation. What if the Kashmiri people today want an independent nation well, that, out of the ambit of Pakistan or India? Well, I think this is for the leaders to decide if they're ready to grant that and, and if they, those people can sustain their independence. Let's switch gears again. In the last elections, the Islamic parties, you were asked this question in Business 9 interview on the 2nd of March with Rashida Bhagat. In the last elections, the Islamic parties did very well, unlike the previous times. Do you think the success was due to the clamping down on religious extremism and allying with the U.S.? You responded, we always said Islamic parties never come together. So by constantly prodding them, we brought them together. Second, there were anti-American feelings in the streets. The linkage between 9-11 and Osama bin Laden were not clearly established and the public sympathy was against the United States. This was capitalized by these parties. It is good that our religious parties, instead of encouraging extremism, participate in elections and demonstrate that they can provide a clean and good government with justice general. Are you placing the onus of the rise of the, the religious parties on just 9-11 
And are you taking that onus away from the beheading of the two main secular mainstream political parties of this country? Uh, I by and large stand by this statement which I had given at that time. But I do agree with you by exclusion of two, one moderate and one more, uh, I would say, sort of secular, the People's Party. By excluding them, there was a vacuum and it was filled by the religious parties to some extent. But uh, I stand by this statement by saying it is a good thing for religious political parties to come out and contest elections. But General, you also said very interestingly that uh, these, uh, these parties, these religious parties, uh, can provide a clean and good government with justice. Interesting words from a man who took on militant factions from the religious right. Now, militant Do you factions, think these, these people no, militant can provide... Factions, militant factions are, you know, sectarian parties. They are the jihadi parties. So they are the ones who take up arms. These parties, what I'm talking about, are political religious parties which believe in elections, which believe in, uh, you know, voting. And uh, they have been uh, running uh, the frontier province and, uh, and, and they're also very strong in Pakistan. And they're running their government as good or as bad as any in their province. During your governorship, Article 245 was implemented in Sindh and Karachi. It was implemented to maintain law and order, which was completely out of hand at that time. Do you agree with media reports which indicate that the five police chiefs of Karachi in, in, five, in the five districts were provided with a list of 7,600 MQM workers to target, even before the crackdown was launched, even before 245 was implemented, the police chiefs of Karachi were, were, were provided with a list of 7,600 MQM workers. Isn't that targeting a single party? Well, uh, I have not given any such list to anybody, but everybody knows that the police chief here was appointed uh, by Nawaz Sharif and uh, Nawaz Sharif's party and MQM had fallen apart. They had left the coalition and government rule was established. So who gave them this list of 7,000 people? I do not know. Isn't that interesting? The, you mentioned the police chief. Wasn't your relationship with the police chief troubled? And isn't it true that uh, that was one of the reasons why you were taken off duty as the governor? No, that's not true. Uh, in spite of uh, many handicaps, we had smooth working relationship because the idea was to get things moving rather than get involved you know, in our in-house fighting. And this man may not be of my choice, but he respected me and by and large he delivered as I told him. We're talking to Lieutenant General Muinuddin Heather. You are watching Talk Back. Stay tuned.